Hello, I am Kirsten from Google. Thank you so much for coming, and welcome to the Curiosity Rooms presented by Google Pixel 3. I hope you've had a chance to check out the space. If so, you may have seen things like the Top Shot slide, Group Selfie Car Wash, and Night Sight Grotto, which is our play on making every day more extraordinary. This is what Google Pixel 3 is all about. And the same goes for extraordinary people who are here to share their passions and how they reframe their day to day. We're so lucky to be hosting John Boyega and Femi Ogun's MB. So let's give them a big round of applause. You know what, if I told my mum and dad that I can sell out a space like this. <laughs> Honestly, imagine that. You guys, 300 people have just come down to see me. <laughs> and I'm looking at you and you're looking at me and this is just sweet poetry, isn't it? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to say something to you guys before we start, okay? Just so that you're not distracted as we're doing, having this conversation. I look nothing like Kevin Hart. Okay, right? <laughs> so, like, so with you, I, quite frankly, I think I'm better looking than him and I'm slightly taller than him. Right? <laughs> um, so guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to, I call it my room of curiosity, but this is Curiosity Rooms. And, um, you're going to get insight into the kind of conversations that I have with um, John Boyega behind closed doors. Obviously without the naughty bits, okay, right? So it'll be very, very clear for you guys. But you're going to get to see and just hear and understand a bit more about him. Um, so guys, let me just get this party started like it's 1999. Welcome in John Boyega. You know what, I decided today that I'm going to give you a glass of wonderful Highland water. Did you pour this? Uh, I did pour it for you. All right. Thanks, sir. It's nice, it's fresh. Thank you, sir. Let's get to it, man. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Mr. John Bega, thanks very much, man. This is Why are you interviewing me like you don't know me, man? It didn't come back. <laughs> 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 it came before like a proper talk. It's like, Absolutely. John Bega. Right. Don't call me that on the phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're right, you're right. I don't trust my legs in tight jeans like this, do I? <laughs> um, Alright, so, so what we're going to do, we're going to have to have a conversation, man. Yeah, man. So we're just going to pretend it's just me and you. I've like, set the mood, the lights, you know. Yeah. Alright, it's alright, mate. Right. Right. So we're just going to have a nice little conversation, just find out a bit more about you, man. Yeah. I've always wanted to do that. I'm, I'm always open. Um, and uh, I just want to say a personal thank you for everyone for turning up. This is amazing. This is amazing. Right. <laughs> So John, like, so what I just said, I've just warned the audience, we're going to have one of those conversations that we normally have on the phone without the naughty bits, okay, right? So it's just me and you, I can just try it. If, right. if I see you're going to go there, then I'll just yeah, snap yeah, it straight just, away. Just swim, you know so listen, let's just talk about the beginning. Yeah. You know, how it all began. I met you, well, actually, I was in a youth drama club. In Woolworth Road. Yeah. Um, oh, some Willie Road people here. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, and we were in a place called the Crypt, which is like a, a church, and they sometimes use it for uh, artistic space and, and loads of stuff. And I got a leaflet that had kind of like a, a group of, of, of black people, black actors, standing there, and underneath were their names and the biggest project they, they had done. And it was your school. And it was like, you know, it kind of felt like, you know, World War or something, we need you. And it was just the, at, at the time, the title was the first black drama school. And for me, I was just like, no, nah, this sounds good, man, because I know that all Rada and that, they're going to have no one like me, man, because I ain't doing that contemporary dance shit. <laughs> you basically enticed me with a, a, with a lot of the successes that you had in school when I came down to audition. And I would hear about this guy. Everyone's like, have you met Femi? I'm like, no, no, I haven't met Femi. Everybody like, yeah, Femi's brutal, man, he's honest, man. You might want to be scared of him. I said, all right, probably ain't nothing anyway. Went into the audition, um, and I saw him, I saw you sit in there. And what's the first thing you told me when I, when I met you? I said not to get too relaxed. <laughs> the, the, the disrespect, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> disrespect. No, 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 no. What it was, what it was, because we're actually fast-forwarding it, because I wasn't actually at your auditions. Oh, no, you weren't at the first audition, but you were at the... I wasn't, I wasn't even, even at the oh, second the first audition. lesson. I, I wasn't, yeah, it's the yeah. first lesson. Yeah. So what happened was, like, as you know, in the school, you, you know, you auditions get into the school, yeah. and it's rare. I think it's, it never even happens when you get straight into the professional tier. It's rare, okay, uh, right? 
So all of a sudden, <laughs> oh, well, 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 you know, all of a sudden, Akira, okay, right, I hear that yourself and yeah. Vanessa Bavariere, yeah. um, two of you guys got, got through the auditions and you got straight into the professional group. Yeah. So already, I already had a, had, had a word of the rest of the staff saying, well, what is this nonsense? You've got, you, you know, <laughs> wow. no, 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 it's one of, you know, the rites yeah, of the yeah. passage, you've got to start whatever it is. Yeah. So when I sat down in that first lesson, and I just saw how relaxed you were, you know, just leaning on that chair. <laughs> I, took, I, I remember just telling you straight. Familiar. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 you know, I had to tell you straighten your back and all this stuff, and don't get too relaxed because just because you're here in the first session, yeah, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to be here at the end of the session. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that was interesting. I remember what was that piece that you've done um, that you performed? Do you remember? Um, I, I was I performed a scene with Malachi Kirby. I'm sure you guys heard of him, um, and Ooh. he we had a scene in which. I had che cheated. I, I was with his wife and we were in a car and I had to let him know what I'd done. And it was a really good scene. I felt like we went, we went at each other quite well. It was quite subtle, quite emotional, um, quite in depth. And I'm glad you liked it, man. I'm yeah, I did. I knew you kind of knew it was done. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. It's still the same, mate. Still yeah, the same job. Well, I, I remember, I remember because like, I came in there all hardball right at the beginning of the lesson. And then I was completely taken aback by that performance. And I got you to do a few other things. And you just yeah. kept on just, you know, doing a Zorro effect and every single thing. Man, you know, to be honest with you, I was just broke and hungry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know the ones where you, you, you do a scene and it's just, it's sometimes not about the character. It's about the circumstances that you're going through in life. And sometimes that influences the scene. I just think you caught me at a moment where I was really hungry. And the... the I mean, both literally and <laughs> where you know you, you just don't know if your dreams are, are, are real and if it's going to happen, and that kind of scares you because life is now asking you to take yourself seriously now. What are you going to do? But it's funny because um, normally, you know, you know, when you have a drama school, you have actors going through there, um, you see their progression and you see their maturity develop, mm. and it's just good to see at such a refreshing age at 16 that you were able to treat a character as an extension of yourself. Mm and the character as in the situation mm. that you now present. Yeah. Um, and just seeing how you just connected to those, those lines and just brought it to life, that was fantastic. Oh, and I remember me being all bold and, and all that kind of stuff right in front of you at the beginning, as soon as that lesson finished, do you remember that one? Do you that guy followed me from Gooch Street down to Tottenham Court Road Station, saying, yeah, yeah, John, John, yeah, yeah, me. Okay, by the way, I don't think that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do my thing. Okay, do your thing. Yes, yeah, so it was like, hey, I think you're honestly fantastic, man. You know what I mean? I think you're great. I think you should come in and, 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 and definitely talk to us about being represented by IAG. Um, and I can't lie, you put a lot of emphasis into IAG as if anybody had heard about it before. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of like, all right, all right, okay, all right. Just kind of like, okay, just, just, just to say, okay, all right, listen. There are other actors before you. Okay, I'm very <laughs> I, I wasn't broke, okay, right? I was just... No, 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 you I could was, man. I, 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 no, 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 I, I was living a good life. It may not have been a great life, okay, I was still living a good life, okay, right? So just, just, because it's not one of those things you come to my, my house and you start rubbing the table saying, and looking at me as if to say, I'm the one that bought that. That's <laughs> right? But, no, no, but, but it's funny, cause it, it felt like um, the Pied Piper, because there it was just, you know, walking down there with you, with a stream of students behind, yeah. and then looking thinking, what's going on? You know, yeah. this guy gets straight into our group straight away, and then we just connected. Yeah. But um, I don't want to call it a needle in the haystack effect, because in that school, we've got so much great talent. We've got talent that, you know, they, they start in one, you know, one tier group, where it's the foundation, and they work themselves up. Yeah. But honestly, just seeing what you brought, and the difference and in intensity in your eyes, something just spoke to me, I said to myself, Dan, I want to sign this guy. And, that, and that's against protocol because you know you're, just, you're there to active, you're there to train, and there I am having that conversation after the first session about signing you. I didn't understand it. I was like, what does that even mean? Like, I'm just trying to see how to get from one stage to the other, how to, how, how to transition from calling my career an acting team and calling it a, a, a real career in which we have to figure out a strategy. And I, and I think that till then, I always thought that I could do it by myself. Because I, I, I had an agent before that, you know, from a from little small agency in, in, in Peckham that they just started up and I was a part of that. And so I always thought that it was my own efforts that was going to get me closer and closer to what I wanted to achieve. But the realisation I had was that collaboration. Collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. And because of your passion, you were very passionate about acting the way I was, but from another perspective. And you had strategy. 
he had strategy, I had, let's say, talent and work ethic to do it. And so that's how I felt like spiritually, I was like, you know what, we're on the, we're on the same page. I ain't getting no more offers from anywhere else, so <laughs> I might as well sign up and see how this goes. And it's funny, because we'll get, we'll, get back, we'll get into a bit more in a minute, just in terms of the kind of battles that we got into. Do you know what I mean? Because it wasn't all fairy tales and all that kind of stuff. It, no, no, no. It, do you know what I mean? It's somebody, somebody coming across like a I mean, you know, it was, it, you know, it was hard for me when we first started going to professional auditions. I don't know how many actors that we have there. All the actors, what are we saying? <laughs> you, you, you guys know how it is. You go to auditions constantly. And you don't know which role is for you. You don't know why you would get a no. Or sometimes why you would even get a yes. It's just... You try as much as possible and, and let the opportunity present itself to you. Um, sorry, and sorry, being sorry. In that, this is bugging me. Sorry, oh, is that, I'm, I'm going to sit back. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry. And being in that, being in that position, I, I really, I really didn't understand the work ethic part of it because I was doing, I was going to college, I was, I was studying, I was living my life as a teenager, and I didn't get the work ethic. Oh, John, you have to be at this meeting, then you have to go travel onto this meeting, and, and that took me a lot to get, get used to. And I think that's where we had a lot of clashes and conflicts when it came to that. Absolutely. So, so what would you say, I mean, it's quite obvious, but what would you say was your first biggest break where you were like, wow, it's, it's actually happening? Attack the block, man. Yeah! Let's talk a bit about that. Let's talk a bit about the process. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I had been with you for a year. Yeah, I think about that. A year before Attack the Block was in question. Before that, I was doing theatre, which was amazing, um, at, uh, in Kilburn. And I was doing three plays, and they, they would run like simultaneously, which was quite cool. And they were based on really, really, really important, hard, hard issues. And it was a, a good experience for me. But the great thing about it was really all I was doing was experiencing other actors be great. And I was there doing glorified, you know, bringing on tables and chairs, you know what I mean? And I, I had one line that I milked every night. I milked this one line just to get my moment. And I remember that really humbled me. And then Attack the Block came into question. And you, I remember you called me and said that, Mina Gold. But, no, but it's funny, let, let's just go back a bit because I know the wonderful Kwame Kwayama. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, so he was the one that was directing, he, he was directing those plays, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, he was, he was Kwame Kwayama was, was directing, Bola Baje was directing, and uh, Roy Williams was directing a, a, another piece as well. I remember in Kwame's piece, yeah. you only had one line. I only had one line, and, and, and that was, um, Sir, it's time for you to get to the stage now. <laughs> Every night I was doing it different. Hey, yo, Sir, it's time for you to get to the stage now. Sir, it's time to get to the stage now. I was doing it so many different, different ways. <laughs> Every night. But that really, really humbled me and made me even more hungry to, to get a role that was artistically fulfilling as well as just, you know, a paycheck. Because the reason why I'm, I'm, just, I'm just drawing attention to that is because I remember that conversation we had yeah. when you said Kwame was, wasn't very happy with you. <laughs> because, um, and, then, yeah. and the reason why I'm saying that is because I just want to talk about that mm. and then the whole 360 in terms of... Yeah. I, I remember, you know, when you do theatre, you have to go to the read-throughs, you, you, you have to go to the rehearsals. I only, I only had one line. And you know, you're going from each scene and actors have time to discuss, dissect the characters. And I would have to sit there for all this discussion until it comes to my one life. <laughs> and I slept off, I slept off. I mean, the, the actors were talking about their emotions and their feelings, which obviously had nothing to do with me. My role wasn't even big enough to the point where it, the character had something important to say. But I slept off and I remember I was sleeping and Kwame McQuay was just like, John, it's your line. And I woke up and I was kind of like, oh, come on, man, you could have got, you know, my man just walked in with a coffee to say it. <laughs> you know, he, he goes, yeah, John, I'd like you to say your line. And I'm like, Okay, cool. Uh, excuse me, sir. It's time for you to get to the stage, please. And he goes, thanks, John. And after that, him doing that made a point to me. Always show up. It doesn't matter how small the opportunity is, always show up. Because what makes you think that you can have an attitude when it comes to small opportunities, but then you want to be good enough to get the big ones? It doesn't make any sense. So it was definitely a, a moment for me to learn something and I don't even know where he, where he knows that he taught me that but in that moment I was like wow my guy wanted me to stay the whole rehearsal just to say this one line but then I was like you know what I get it because once I started to get to feature films most of the time you're waiting on set anyway mm -hmm. so it's, it's a skill that definitely was, was, was good for me and just with the whole subject of you know showing up 
it, it was thanks to those plays that he'd done at the Tricycle yeah. that he gave a great opportunity for the likes of Joe Cornish yeah. and, and Nina Gold to come and watch you time and time. They watched you about three or four times. Because yeah. they really wanted to make sure they got the right person yeah. for that role of Moses. Yeah. Um, in the it was funny because at the time, I, we, we, we discussed that I didn't, I didn't want to be in, in the Holby Cities or I didn't want to do EastEnders. So, you know, I, I, I do a guest lead in Law and the UK or I do something that I've done called My Murder. I wanted to do things that, you know, were, were, were effective. And I was just like, you know, I know all actors don't get the opportunity to just pick and choose and you've got to ride a balance. But I remember saying that to you and most agents and would be like kind of, all right, you wait for the phone to ring and I'll let you know. <laughs> Whereas you kind of understood that I, I, I wanted to go into feature films eventually. But the way it just happened, I don't think we can control that moment of, of me now. No, no, absolutely. And one thing I've really, really admired about you, and it's, I, I just want this to be as honest as you, and, yeah, and to the point, because it's very good to just glorify the person that you're representing and all this kind of stuff, but it's just real talk, and that's the reason why I agree, we need to talk about the conflicts and all that, as well as yeah. celebrate the highs. But yeah. one thing that I loved about you, just in terms of your creative integrity, is the fact that here's somebody, even at the age of 17 years old, you were willing to starve rather than just accept any role. Well, I was willing to stay starving. You yeah. see, stay starving. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. Stay starving where you oh, start yeah. to develop the white bits of the corners of your mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, bread and water, mate. Bread and water, man. That, that's, that's what it was. I mean, And it worked out. We were tapping the block. It did, but but that's not to say that it, I thought it was going to work out. Because I, because I, I'll be honest, I, I didn't, I didn't really know. I just, I just knew that whatever decision I make, I've got to commit to it. The day you decide to be a part of entertainment, you are a glitch in the system. You are, it's, it's not natural. You don't have a nine to five. You don't hustle for it the same way. You, you, you don't go into into meetings and have the same type of discussions. You know, in comparison to you wanting to be a part of a law firm, so I just, I guess that I built up this mentality of hustle without pay, hustle without food, hustle without water, hustle without nothing coming back. Because once you expect something to come back, it creates this kind of laziness in the early stages. Because it's hard, it's easier for someone to tell you, "This is your office. Here's what I need you to do today, and that's it." Whereas with acting, with entertainment, it's just you. That's it. You. You just got you, your talents, your dreams, and your job is to take it out from here and put it here. But I couldn't have done that without, obviously, you, man. No. That's oh, nice, man. Yeah, man. And th that's one of those moments. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 nice, man. Um, what was I going to say? Just in terms of Attack the Block, mm. how do you feel? Do you feel it, it, it changed the whole social landscape? Do you feel as though also that it pushed the envelope when it comes to like UK filmmaking. What kind of impact do you feel Attack the Block had on this? Well, well for me the first thing was that at the time I was very irritated and I expressed this to you on the phone. I called you and I was kind of like every single role that black people get put up, put up for in the UK we're stabbing someone, we're shooting, we're doing all these things and it's like that doesn't capture you know how unique we are as human beings you know and it, and it always seems to be the the constant thing that they want to do in the UK. We just want to do hood films and we want to put young black boys in it as the, as, as the leads and we want to portray them in a certain particular way. Attack the Block started with that, with that stereotype. The first scene you have a guy robbing a young white woman in Brixton after she's talking to her mum and she's all pleasant and the kids come in, they're hooded up and bandied up. And as soon as I started the script, I was like, come on man, like, you are doing the same thing. You We've seen this is kid but on like steroids now. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I turned the pages and I just started, started to see the way the characters developed, the fact that Moses was really the decisions that he made was because of the brokenness, and which is something that you don't get with, with the news. The news just gives you the gives you the news as you as you are without no clarity as to why certain people make these this, these decisions. And Attack the Block done that for me. It, get, it gave us a reason as to why you would find these type of kids in, this, in these type of circumstances with a big massive sci-fi as the backdrop. And for me it was fun, I, I was like 18, I was 18, you know, you're first talking to girls on the phone, you know, meeting them off Bebo and that, like, like <laughs> yeah, I'm good too, yeah, I'm good, just, uh, just filming the movie, uh, I'm lead by the way, <laughs> one of the um, And I remember, do, I remember it, 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 the book for me was just a nostalgia, it was so fun, because we didn't know what we, was, what we were doing, I mean, we, we didn't understand everything about filmmaking, but it was a chance to be 
professional and learn about the real work ethic, which is every day, early wake-ups, training, stunts, and it was, it was really a good time for me, and I loved it. And then we had that really small movie, <coughs> um, the one that's called, um, in fact, sorry, I've got, got a little thing over there. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah. Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Star Wars. How was that? Let's just talk through the whole process even, because a lot of people don't really know what you had to go through in order to get that role. That was just ridiculous. First of all, it's funny, because I remember when I was in LA and I was shooting Imperial Dreams, and one of my boys came over to where I was staying and was like, oh, can you put me on tape for something? And I'm, I'm not sure if actors, you've had to do that to put somebody on tape, you know, you get the camera up and you read the lines back to them and you film their auditions and send it out to casting directors. And my boy was, was auditioning for Star Wars. And so he told me, he was like, yeah, it's a secret audition, I can't tell you about it. I'm like, bro, what are you auditioning for? And he was just there like, it's Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> What are they just going to like really professional actors or are they doing open auditions? It goes, but they've seen everyone, even black people. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, there's a black male. Ah. And I was just thinking, wow, remember I rang you? And I was like, Femi, nah, look, I'm, I'm hearing about Star Wars, like, a lot of people are going up for it. Where's, where's my audition? And what did you say? Just take your time, man. Don't worry, we'll come. We'll come. I, it, it took so long to get that audition, I even considered going to one of the open auditions. Like, I'll be a, I'll be a creature. I, I'll do anything. <laughs> I'll, I'll be a toenail. I don't know. <laughs> and I remember, I remember it was a long process, but you called me. I remember I was, on the, I was on the overground train on my way to Edmonton to meet that dodgy lawyer you got me. And, um, it, it, it wasn't a lawyer, he was a solicitor. He was an accountant. He was an accountant. He was, he was so rubbish, man. He was so bad. But I, I remember I was on the train and you called me and you go, you go, yeah, yeah, John, John. Um, yeah, man. Listen, stop stuttering. I don't stutter. 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 No, 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 no. You stutter me. You stutter, man. You do. All right. Oh, man. So I remember, and you told me, you told me that, um, that, that Nina Gold wanted to invite me in for an audition for, for Star Wars. My heart just dropped on the train. Like, I was just like, oof, okay, cool. Because I knew that all the stress that we were going through at the time, the phone wasn't really ringing. I'd done a, a, a pilot in the States that failed, and Hollywood was just like... But you know what? <laughs> let's put a pause on the Star Wars. Yeah. We're going to come back to that. But let's rewind a tiny bit, because I kind of fast-forwarded it. Yeah. Because what we did, after you've done Attack the Block, yeah. That's when we decided, you know what, let's go to Hollywood. Let's, let's go to the States. Because the Tatter Block didn't in the UK as much as it did in America. In, in America, this was the first film that, of, of its sort that got like a, a domestic distribution. And so all these Americans went in and was like, yo, they got black people in London! <laughs> no, they were really just really excited and they had this insight to a culture in London that, was, that had a little bit of sauce. <laughs> and, you know, and it was nice to to be able to, to, to explore that in, in, in a very unique way and I was very, very excited about the opportunity. No, it, it was, it was, because I remember at first, I don't believe that they had real confidence that a black person could really sell a type of film like that over in the US. Um, I mean, that was the culture of that the was, time. Yeah. I mean, that was just the culture of the time and, and I knew that as a reality going in. I mean, you see, it, it, it was blatant, you know, on a day-to-day on -day basis. And I know you wouldn't mean, about, about you know, certain obstacles that would, would be different. Um, and it was something that I just had at the back of my mind for a long time. What was funny, because I remember cause when, when we went to, we had quite an event here on our first time in, um, in Hollywood. LA. Yeah, in LA. This guy, this guy went to my Nigerian dad <laughs> yeah. and told my Nigerian dad, I want to quit uni. <laughs> and leave to go to LA with him. <laughs> my dad was thinking, who is this demon that <laughs> <laughs> My dad was not on it, not trustworthy. Like, you know, you, you know, imagine your, 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 your 70, 18 year old son comes back with a guy and just goes, yeah, we're going away, we reach out to LA to, to, to just search for our dreams. <laughs> and, yeah, my dad was looking at me like, no, you are going to study. <laughs> um, but I don't know how you've done it, man. It, 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 for me, those times when you would call my parents and when, when you would have those discussions to give me the green light to leave London, was it, it, it did really show to me that this guy's in it for more than money. This guy is on some historical shit. And, and, and I'm with that. 
Yep. I'm with that for sure. No, absolutely, absolutely. It, it, it's one of those ones you just can't deny it. Do you know what I mean? We're talking about spirituality and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. But I knew, I had already it's seen it. the way it was, man. No, I, I'd already seen it. Well, you guys I, know about energy, right? You, you just, you meet yeah. somebody and they, they, they want the same thing as you. They want the same thing within the same industry. But it's not based on your success being better than theirs, or it's not based on a, it's based on collaboration. You're both there and you're like, wow, we, we are passionate about the same things in the same way. Let's do it, man. Let's, let's really do something. And to be honest, a lot of the people that we call great today, that's how they all, that's how they all started. There was a, a, a unique collaboration and, and it, it came from a very good energy. Absolutely. And really, truly, I, and I was really, really crying out for somebody who could not only pioneer, but somebody who could who'd be able to influence the masses in a real, real positive light, because we just touched on it very, very loosely, the whole effect of the gangland, gang violence and all this kind of stuff, and I just thought that your song... E Evening you Standard, I think it was Evening Standard that brought out that article about, you know, me, me living in Peckham and, and um, you know, you know because, because I knew, I knew Damino the Taylor and because my family was involved in the investigation, that, you know, you know, John's affiliated with Knife Crime. I'm like, no, I, I went to Theatre Peckham and was doing, like, like AAs and shit. Like, I was doing, like, dancing. I was doing contemporary dance tap. You know, I, I took a, a speech exam with, with, with Guildhall. I was in Peckham doing that. Just because I'm in Peckham doesn't mean I have to be a part of the negative, negativity of that particular place. That is stupid, sim that's a simple mentality that shouldn't exist in our world. And it's the same reason why we've had a diversity issue, because sometimes you just want... As human beings, I feel like the issues that we go through in this world makes us process things in a very simple way. And that's because that's how we're fed stuff. You know, you go on Twitter, it's your thought, it's right there. The adverts are right there. We, we, don't, we never have clarity. You know how many opinions? We've all done it. We've had really serious opinions on things we're not even involved in. <laughs> you don't know that celebrity. You don't really know. And it's like that, as a, as a mentality, we're talking to you was something that you were shaking out of me preparation for where we're going. But, but the funny thing is that none of that could happen without the the faith that your dad had in this. Because the I fact is like that. we're saying it quite lightly about do you know what I mean about a Nigerian dad like that's unheard of. The fact that you've already <laughs> you want to quit what? You want to quit what? <laughs> Especially you want to go your, a guy who's in your like, first year. You imagine that. that thing. <laughs> and, and only that like a guy a guy that's almost twice your age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, 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 it's one of, but, but it's that trust, is that trust that your dad had to be able to just to, you know, delve into his the emotional reservoir and, and say, you know what? No, he prayed on it and said, okay, Femi, I'm trusting you. But I think, I think for years my dad was going through a, a, a conflict of not knowing what the job, the job is. In Nigeria, they don't call acting acting, it's drama. <laughs> but that's so weird. You know, it's, it's just drama. It's like, it's not seen as a, as a tangible career. Um, and I think it's changed now because of the amount of young people we've got now being into the arts. But, but then, for my dad, it was the conflict of, well, how is my son going to survive? But at the same time, I think he saw that there was a passion that, that we had and it was kind of like, okay, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what God will do, as he would like to say. And, and what was your experience of going to um, LA for the first time? I can't lie, I didn't trust you, man. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't trust you, man. I didn't trust you. I didn't trust. I didn't trust what was going on. I mean, I, I, had, I had, you know, sat with so many people before that promised you the world, that promised you that you, you know we're going to book this, man, and we're going to do this. Even on a ground level, like friends, you want to film a short film on Saturday, you lot come in like five hours late. You know, it's the little things of, of disloyalty that I'd experienced that made me not trust you. And when we were on the plane, I remember just feeling like, wow, this is this is real. Um, and we got we got to the to the airport got in the car, you crashed the car in Inglewood. <laughs> yeah, like, like he clicked, he clicked the, 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 the side mirror in Inglewood. And he was like, John, should I stop? I go, bro, keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that was before I, I found Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I said, keep on going, mate. No, There's no need, man. No, 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 no and Attack the Block was doing numbers. People loved Attack the Block. They were enjoying it. They were saying fam and bruv and they felt a nostalgia from it. And we were just there like, oh, that's all right. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. And um, 
I remember we were staying in a motel and attack the block got distribution and they moved us from this crazy, crappy motel to the Ritz Carlton. Ooh. I remember being there like, Robert! Hey, let me have a room. Like, we would enjoy those kind of things together. Like, it's really yeah. nostalgic. Okay, people, right. right. So let, let me just explain, right? The reason why I was in a motel, all right? Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want these guys to start thinking this age is cheap. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let them see the transition. No, no, no. No, 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 no. It, it was deliberate transition. <laughs> okay, because that is. Had I gone by myself, yeah, I had money, you know. That, I, I didn't have money. Okay, I would have been in a five-star hotel, okay, right? And because it's you, I'd already spent enough money on this. Because the thing on is, flats, yeah. honestly, because if you think about a music manager, it's completely yeah. different from an acting manager. Yeah, yeah. Acting managers don't don't put money, put money in. in. They take money out. Yeah, that's right. what we do. <laughs> exactly. That's how it was, okay? So for me, I just thought, you know what? You want a treat here? You got holiday in? Right? Holiday in? <laughs> well, well, you know what? You want a treat well, here? Was that really to humble me? Would that was wrong for you, because, because I knew it was in the store for both of us.